There's a few things that I commonly keep on hand in my refrigerator and in my freezer that really seem to help me streamline my meal prepping and my cooking when I am actually going to put a meal together. So I thought I would share them with you in case it might give you some ideas on things that you could keep on hand as well to really help simplify things while you're throwing everything together. One thing that I almost always have on hand in my refrigerator is a bottle of lemon juice. This has made it so much easier than having to stop and squeeze a lemon just to get the quantity that I need. I equate about a half a cup of lemon juice is about one lemon. Um, so that's what I use. Now it doesn't taste as amazing, obviously, as a real fresh squeezed lemon, but it does fine for what it is, especially when it's just going in like a marinade. Another thing that I have started carrying in my fridge all the time, and that's been at least for the last year, is a bottle of minced garlic. I used to chop up garlic every single time I needed it for the amount of recipes I needed, so I would chop it all at one time, and that was more efficient than chopping it just per individual meal on the nights that I needed it. But let me tell you, having it already chopped for you is a lifesaver. And I just make sure to have a jar of this on hand at all times. So I have one in the fridge at all times, and typically one in my pantry just as a backup in case I do go through the whole jar while I'm doing my meal prepping. But it has saved so much time and hassle when I am putting together meals quickly, because you just take a half a teaspoon, and that's equivalent to one clove of garlic, and you just dump it in. And if I want a little more garlic, it's already there and ready for me. <laughs> Next, I wanted to move on to what I have in my freezer, almost always on hand. Um, and I'm just gonna go down this list with you. This bag over here um, are cubes of lime juice with lime zest. I just grab a big, I think it's a five pound bag from Costco of limes, or if there's a store that has them on sale when they're in season, I will just get a bunch of them all at once. I will wash them, zest the outside of about half of them with a microplane grater, and I will put about one teaspoon of the grated zest into a, it's a baby food, like ice cube tray, and each cube holds four tablespoons or a quarter of a cup of the juice. So I'll put the zest in each of those, and then I will juice all of the limes and then just pour in the four tablespoons into each one and freeze them, and once they're done being frozen, stick them in a Ziploc bag with the date on them, and then I have lime juice ready to go whenever I need it. And we really like lime juice and the recipes that call for it, and a lot of my recipes that I use do call for it. So even if it's more lime juice than the recipe calls for, um, that's totally fine by us. It just adds more flavor, and it's also great when I'm making fresh guacamole. I just stick one or two of those cubes, melt them, and then stick them in with the avocados and the other ingredients, and it's, it's so, so good. It really makes the guacamole amazing. Over here I have um, chopped up green onions, and these are really cool because they do not tend to stick to each other. Um, so it's not like you have to put them on a cookie sheet first and so that they aren't sticking when they're frozen and then transfer them into a bag. You just stick them in there and they stay fairly loose. I love using these um, when I'm making omelets. I'll throw them in with omelets or you can um, throw them in with any recipes that you need. It does change the um, consistency of the onion a little bit, but it's not too bad, especially if they're going to be getting cooked. Um, to go with that, I'll kind of switch this over. Um, this is red onion, so same thing. They don't stick together very much, and I use these in omelets as well. I'll use them in any type of cooking that I that call for a red onion. Um, I use them on top of pizza. Uh, it's already ready, chopped, ready to go, so it makes throwing things together super easy. These ones do, though, uh, get mushy when they defrost and they're room temperature, so if you want something that has more of a crunch from the red onion, you're not going to want to use your frozen ones, you're going to want to use fresh. But for other things that it doesn't really matter on the texture, this is a great alternative. Over here I have um, ginger root. All you do is you peel it and then you stick it in a bag and freeze it. And whenever you need freshly grated ginger root, you, fr you grate it from frozen. And it gets this really fine, um, kind of like misty type, it's really fine. And so you just grate that in 
to your marinade or your meal, whatever it is you want, and it's perfect to go as is, and it makes it super easy with the grating, because sometimes when you're grating a fresh piece of ginger root, it kind of gets juicy and um, fibrous, and makes it hard to grate it. So when it's frozen, it's a lot easier to grate. Um, and we use this in a lot of our meals too. A lot of Asian meals call for it, so it's, it's really nice. Uh, okay, then I'm gonna move up here. This is a bag of multi, uh, three colored uh, bell peppers, already chopped and frozen. Frozen. I buy this one particular one at Trader Joe's. I find that the cost for the amount that you're getting um, is fairly equivalent to just buying a bell pepper on its own, plus you get the three colors. So if you aren't particular about what colors you're getting and you don't mind having the, the tri colors, I think this is a great option. And I equate about a half of one of these bags is about one bell pepper chopped up. So that's just kind of, so you know, and it's a, I want to say a 16 ounce bag, just so you have reference. Yes, it's a 16 ounce, ounce bag in case you buy yours somewhere else. Over here, and this might look weird, um, these are artichoke hearts. I use these on top of pizzas and sometimes in some chicken meals. And so I just divvy out um, either a jar or a can of artichoke hearts and I put them in little baggies so that I just defrost the amount that I want. And it's great, again, for throwing on top of a pizza. You could even throw it in a salad. You could put it on an omelet. Wherever you want to have artichoke hearts, it's a great way to do it and just use what you need and then the rest just stays in the freezer. These are chili peppers that we actually grow in our garden. We have an overabundance of them. The plants just go crazy. So we, every once in a while, just pick a bunch of them and then chop them up and freeze them. My husband loves them. I use those in our guacamole as well. Um, otherwise I tend to put them in his omelets, he'll put them on a quesadilla, and it's just real simple. You just, you know, take them out, throw them on top of whatever you want them on, and they defrost super fast. I throw them in frozen into the guacamole, and by the time I'm done mixing everything up, they're the temperature they should be. Um, so I've done that with jalapenos before too, and it worked great, so I'm fairly certain with just about any type of chili, chop it up like that, throw it in the freezer, and they're ready to go for you. Over here, this is a bag of mushrooms, sliced mushrooms. I just bought a big bag of sliced mushrooms and then put them in little snack size bags. And then I put them inside of a larger um, Ziploc bag just so that they wouldn't get lost in my freezer because little bags like that tend to get lost. This bag of artichokes should be in a bag like that as well because it was lost in my freezer and I just found it. Um, so again, the mushrooms are great for anything that's gonna be cooked. So I put it on top of our pizzas. I put it in omelets. Um, any type of, uh, oh gosh, like a chicken marsala type meal. Something where it's gonna be cooked because the texture does get changed a little bit because of the um, moisture, the water in the mushroom. But if it's gonna be a cooked meal, for me, it doesn't change the texture enough to be noticeable that it bothers us. So for us, it's great. You may want to try it out first before maybe trying it on the rest of your family or on guests and see what you think about it. But I think I think it's great. And again, it's super easy. I'm not wasting a bunch. Um, and I'm also not cleaning a bunch of mushrooms because I've already bought them pre-cleaned and sliced. Although sometimes I do slice them myself. Um, it just depends on the mood I'm in. Another thing that's great to keep in your freezer is shredded cheese. Um, this lasts a while and it's great um, to just pull this out again for if we need to make pizza or something like that. And so before it goes bad, I just have quart size bags filled up in our freezer and about one quart size bag does us for a decent sized pizza. So you just pull out how much you need, let it defrost and you're ready to go. And I have this can of pineapple out just to remind me because I don't have any in my freezer at the moment. but. I also take crushed pineapple or um, smaller pineapple chunks and I'll put those in little Ziploc bags and get those in the freezer as well. Again, great for toppings on pizza. There's also a, another chicken dish that I make. Um, it's Malibu chicken and that calls for crushed pineapple. So I have that on hand, ready to go, already divvied up in the right amount in little Ziploc bags. And that way I'm not also buying smaller cans of pineapple just for the meal that I need it for. I can buy a larger can and then divvy it up and I'm saving money on buying the larger can instead of a bunch of smaller cans. And I'm also not wasting any. So 
So these are common things that I keep on hand and I gotta get them back in the freezer before everything melts. <laughs> um, but I hope it gives you some ideas on things that you might be able to keep in your refrigerator and freezer to help you streamline your meal prepping as well as your cooking. <laughs>